Hi, my name is Anna Metsaranta and I'm the business AI lead at Solita. Um, I've been working with AI for about five years and with systems development for about 15 years. Um, and today I'll show you some of my experiences from the field of AI and specifically why these investments seem to fail so often. Uh, my background is actually in economics. Um, I have a Master of Science in Operations Research and that maybe explains why I'm so obsessed with the value creation and how much value we get out of our investments. Um, nowadays my job is to help customers make the most of data, analytics and AI technologies. So today um, I'll talk you through what I think are some of the common reasons why our AI investments don't really seem to yield a very good return on investment. Uh, then I'll also talk you through a framework that you can use to try to mitigate some of these issues. Um, and then lastly, I'll talk to you about one of our customers that we've been helping to enhance their AI maturity. And whether um, you're already an experienced user of AI and machine learning technologies, or you're only just getting started, I'm hoping that I'll share with you um, some insights and ideas today that you can take and uh, use in your own work afterwards. Um, before we get into the actual topic, just a few words um, about Solita, in case you're not all very familiar with us. We are a data, uh, technology, design and strategy company um, originating in Finland. Um, nowadays, there's um, over a thousand of us working in six different countries. We've been building data solutions and data capabilities for our customers since 1996. Um, and Towards the end of this presentation, I'll give you a link to a content hub where we put together um, some content that we think you might find specifically interesting since you are here participating in this conference. So hopefully you'll find some more interesting information there. And then before we go any further, I might say a couple of words about Finland and AI as well. Uh, Finland is a country that takes AI very seriously and we have this national objective to increase AI literacy. A couple of years ago, this free online course called Elements of AI was launched and the goal was to educate 1% of Finns in the basics of AI and machine learning. Um, I believe that goal was reached pretty quickly and has been exceeded by now. And by the way, that course is available in English to anybody, so take a look, Elements of AI. Um, there's also a state level AI program in Finland it's run by the Ministry of Finance and is to do with utilizing AI to solve uh, sort of state level issues such as connecting citizens to the correct public services at different stages in their lives. So that's some of the background. Now let's get to the point. So um, from my own experience and also from lots of conversations with my experienced colleagues, um, I'm pretty confident in saying that actually the vast majority of AI initiatives don't really get here. They don't really reach the, um, the value or the target that, that they set out to achieve. Um, and it does actually seem like there's some common reasons for these failures. And before I go into those reasons, um, I just want to kind of clarify that by failure, since I'm a Master of Science in Economics, by failure I mean that the value is not realized. So we might have perfectly well functioning technical solutions, but in my opinion, um, they're not successful unless they end up being used and the value is realized through the change uh, that they make happen. Um, so I'm gonna sort of on a high level talk to you about eight common reasons that I've found. Um, and then after that, I'll talk you through the framework that you can use to mitigate these issues. Firstly, obviously, as I'm sure you already know, the road never looks like this. We never have one brilliant idea and then we know exactly what value we want to get out of it and then we just do it. That's not how it goes. It goes like this. And this is something we just need to be prepared for and we need to accept it. This is what, what it looks like. But what are the common um, obstacles or blocks or reasons for failure along the way? Let's get through them one by one. Firstly, the lack of vision. I think this is mainly to do with the fact that we don't really, as people and as societies, we don't have a good enough understanding of what artificial intelligence and machine learning actually is. 
what it makes possible and what it does not make possible. So obviously, if you don't understand the technology very well, it is really hard to think about, well, what can I do with it? Um, this is a conversation I have a lot with our customers, as, as do my colleagues. Customers want to know, well, how can we utilize AI? What can we do with it? But really, it has to be the business that owns the vision. It has to be the organization that owns the vision and understands what AI makes possible for them. Of course, you can take inspiration from the market. You can bring it to your own company, but you do have to uh, formulate your own vision. A somewhat related point is the hyped up expectations. There's been so much hype and faff about AI for years now that it seems like the expectations are sky high and the realities might be something totally different. Um, and very often actually this is a problem with um, the leadership maybe wanting a moon rocket, but the team that's building the solution say, well, we could deliver a scooter. And then that scooter isn't going to be very impressive. And then leaders are going to think, well, is that even AI? Should I even invest in that? Because it's not the moon rocket that I want. And I think that that's what AI is. But it isn't. It is those scooters. It is these small, practical, tangible things that will take us one step closer to something bigger. But we have to scale the expectations so that we don't actually hamper progress by expecting something that isn't really realistic. Then as long as we're talking about AI, um, what we're actually often talking about is machine learning. And you can't do machine learning without data. Uh, I've yet to see an AI project that has no issues with data. I don't know if such a thing exists, uh, but there's always issues with data. Data is broken, it's unreliable, uh, we can't trust it. Maybe we can't even get access to it, or we can combine different sources of data. There's lots of different issues with data. Um, here, we just kind of need to accept the realities. We need to get to know our data. And then companies that were not born in the age of data and digital probably also have to accept the reality that they have to make investments to make their data accessible and usable. Working in silos is a big issue, particularly if we think about it in a way that we've got business over here who understands the, the profound um, principles of the business, what's driving it, um, what sort of challenges they have. And then if we have technology, the AI, the data, the analytics understanding, somewhere different, and they're not talking to each other, um, no magic happens. Because the business people over here know really what needs to be done, what problems need to be solved. And the technical, the AI people know what's possible. So we have to get these two to speak each other's languages enough so that they can understand each other. And then they can find those places, those golden nuggets of these are the problems we have to solve and we can solve. And then we can go about building such solutions that actually deliver value. By proof of concept trap, I'm referring to the slightly provocative statement that anyone can do a proof of concept. That's not hard. You can have tightly controlled data in a tightly controlled environment, and you can try out algorithms. You can make it perform as well as you like. That's not hard. Anyone can do it, and a lot of people are doing it. But a proof of concept is a million miles from production. And what you want to get the value is production. You want your solution to work in the real world. So. By setting out to do a proof of concept, I think you're already going the wrong way. Because when you're doing a proof of concept, you make technical choices that will not maybe fit into your IT landscape in production. Um, you might make assumptions about data that will never hold in the real world. And you'll just generally build something that might work nicely and neatly in this controlled environment, but it has no connection to reality. And worst case scenario is you're doing something out of technical ambition and there isn't even a problem that needs solving. So then, uh, by default, you're not building anything that will be used. So my advice would be, don't do proof of concepts. Do pilots, because when you set your mind to doing a production pilot, you're already advising your choices to fit the production environment. Lack of human insight. This AI field is still very technical. It's very technically orientated, data orientated. We've got people getting super excited about algorithms. I'm one. Don't get me wrong, I love algorithms. 
But the point still is that if we want real value to be realized um, in the everyday lives, we need to understand the people that will be maybe the users of the solution or they'll be impacted by the solution. And if you think that you know what your customers want, you don't. Not unless you've validated, you've verified, you've observed, uh, you've done your due diligence to understand what really drives your users, what drives people that will be impacted by the solution. Will they ever have the motivation to use it? These are really crucial que questions that need to be asked early on before you build any code whatsoever. And it pays off to use experts here, actual subject matter experts of customer understanding, of human understanding. That is money that you'll save many times over by then not developing solutions that nobody wants. By lack of business design, I'm referring to the fact that often we design AI solutions and we design the outputs from AI solutions, the analytics outcomes, but we don't actually design the consumption of those outputs. Who will use them and how? Whose job will change? What business process will change? Because ultimately, if nothing changes, then no value will be created. So something has to change. And you have to design that change into your business, into your organization, your processes, whatever it is that you're building. You have to also design the consumption of the AI. And really often, confusingly often, I see that this part is totally ignored. Nobody think, thinks about it. We're just sort of ob obsessed by producing some really cool analytical outputs. And we think that people are rational. When we give them something, they will come and they will use it. But they won't. While many of these other points could arguably apply to any kind of a uh, systems or service uh, production project, uh, and they do. This last point is specifically relevant to AI. Neglected AI, meaning that we adopt some AI solution, we put it into production, and then we just leave it there, and we don't monitor, validate, look after it. That's actually quite dangerous, because by default, um, or by definition, AI systems take input from the environment, they process that input to produce I don't know, recommendations, decisions, predictions, whatever it is that that particular software does. But the world around us that produces those inputs is constantly changing. So the inputs are also changing. And the change might be very slow and gradual. It might be also very abrupt. But even that slow and gradual change at some point becomes meaningful. And when it becomes meaningful, your solution will not work anymore. Um, and then at that point, at best, you get a solution that is useless. It'll deliver some outcomes that are of no value to anybody. But at worst, you're actually um, getting some recommendations or decisions that are actively harmful or even against the law. So you can never adopt AI and just forget about it. You have to monitor and validate and retrain. There, these are the common pitfalls. Um, would be really interesting to hear how they resonate with you. Do you recognize these in your own organization? Um, let us know how you feel about these, or is there something else that you think is missing, something that I've overlooked? But then, what can you do about it? This is a framework that we use a lot. Um, this framework can actually be used on various different levels, but today I will talk to you about it in the context of AI initiatives, because here we are interested in making sure that our initiatives deliver value. So this puzzle um, draws our attention to all the other pieces of the puzzle that we must take into account. Often when we talk about AI, we're obsessed with the bottom line. We talk about data, technology, algorithms, but we don't talk about the people, we don't talk about the business processes, and a whole, whole host of other stuff that we really need to talk about uh, to succeed. Let's walk through this. The most important part is in the middle. So this is a funny sort of a puzzle because we build it from the middle. The vision and objectives. You have to communicate the vision and objectives clearly so that people know what they're supposed to work towards. Um, that vision, of course, also has to support your strategy. You have to be doing something that matters to the business, to the organization that you're building it for. Um, you also want it to match your values. 
I recommend pictures. They are very powerful, much more powerful than words. And even if your vision is something quite out there and quite ambitious and long term, that's absolutely fine. By all means, do it. But then, of course, the real algorithms, the real solutions will be small chunks of it. But then it'll be easy to show that, okay, now we're doing this part. And this is how this particular algorithm or this particular solution serves the vision. So focus on the vision first. Then data, as I said earlier, we can't escape the topic of data. Uh, a lot of companies think that their data looks like this. Well, it doesn't. It pretty much always looks like that, and particularly data in the real world, the data that is produced by real world processes. It's really messy. It's really unpredictable. It's really ugly. Um, if you think your data looks like that, look again. The point here is that data is what it is. Uh, you need to learn about your data. You need to learn to understand your data, what it represents, interpret it in context, and through a better understanding of your data, you can start to see it as an asset. How can you get value out of that? How can you use that data to build some algorithms, for example? Technology, while super cool, of course, um, is just an enabler. It's just a tool, has no intrinsic value. And if we think about AI solutions, machine learning solutions, typically the machine learning part is a t really tiny fraction of everything else that needs to be done. The vast majority of work goes into making sure that we have the data where it needs to be, when it needs to be there, that we can combine data, we can validate it, monitor, um, do feature extraction, whatever it is that you need to do with data. You typically need to do a lot with your data before you can run your machine learning uh, code. So technology should be flexible and scalable enough to allow for running those machine learning applications. If you have a modern data platform, then excellent. That's a great place to build on top of. If you don't yet have that, that's fine. Build one piece at a time. Just keep in mind that you want to be building something that's flexible and scalable. Then algorithms or analytics, whatever you want to call it, what we do with the data to get insights and value out of it. There's tons of open source algorithms. They're available to everybody. Um, anyone can use them, um, but data science work is iterative by nature. So you have to allow for this time and iterations, allow for your data scientists to learn about the algorithms in the context of your data, what will be possible. Skills. Um, I'm a Finn, so as I said earlier, Finns like to have a good level of AI literacy. I totally agree with that. I think basic AI education belongs to everyone. And by the way, by everyone, I also mean the very senior leadership. It really belongs to everyone. I don't think you can go wrong by educating your people. Um, the key here is also to bridge the gap between the business and technology. So the business people need to know the basics of AI, but equally the AI people need to know the foundations of your business. And then they can speak each other's languages and understand each other, and then they can make magic happen. Ways of working. Here's a Gartner model that combines design thinking, lean startup, and agile. Those are all really great ways. The point, of course, whatever method you use, that's not important. What's important is to be iterative and incremental. So constantly validate that what you're doing, what you're building, is taking you towards where you want to go. Um, and here, the cross-functional aspect, I cannot stress that enough. You need to have what we've already talked about. We talked about the business and technology speaking to each other, but you also need design. Crucially, you need the human understanding and you need the service design, you need the business design. So we're not talking about user interface design. That's a tiny part of it. Uh, we're talking about all the other as aspects of design that you need to have involved. Organization is ultimately formed by people. People work in an organization and therefore they form the organization. So when you're bringing them, you're bringing AI solutions into your organization, you have to design the business change. Whose job is changing? Or are you maybe creating new job descriptions? If yes, where will they be sitting? How will they work as part of the organization? Uh, all these questions need to be answered and then the change needs to be managed. Um, Probably the most critical success factor is leadership support. 
So if there are any senior leaders in the audience listening, I hope you're paying attention now because you have a crucial role in making sure that your organization's AI initiatives succeed. Um, here, of course, it's important for the leaders to have that basic understanding of AI so that they can judge which initiatives to get behind and which are maybe not so good or which maybe don't support the company strategy so much. But when you find those initiatives that you think are serving the company strategy, they're in line with your risk um, attitude, then show your support, enable, facilitate and support. Without that, it's exceedingly difficult to get anything done. Finally, culture. I could define it here as how we do things here. A lot of things go under the umbrella of culture. Um, I think what we want ultimately, or where the world is going or should be going, is collaboration of people and AI technologies. That's a cultural transformation. So your organization culture will have some maybe thoughts about AI. There might be fears, there might be doubts, there might be um, excitement. There might be all sorts of different emotions and feelings and attitudes that you need to take into account. So when you're bringing AI solutions into your organization, they also have to fit your culture or otherwise um, there is a risk that these solutions will not be adopted. So that's our puzzle. And as I promised, uh, I'm going to now tell you about one particular uh, case example, what we did with one of our customers. DNA is a leading Finnish telecommunications company, sort of uh, similar to German Telecom. And Solita has been working with DNA for about 10 years, building their data platform uh, with DNA, building their data capabilities, even some machine learning algorithms. And what's notable here is that DNA is already an experienced user of AI solutions. They've had production strong uh, algorithms running for some years. But what they felt they had the need for was this common understanding on the leadership team's level so that all the senior executives would speak the same language and understand each other when they were talking about AI and machine learning. Um, so what we set out to do with them is this AI masterclass for executives. It's a training course um, that consists of about half theory, half practice, which gives people a basic understanding of the very sort of basic level of what is AI, what is machine learning. And then crucially, we help people apply that knowledge to their own business, to their own organization, to their own context. Identify cases, um, use case ideas of how artificial intelligence could help them solve business critical problems or enable something for the organization that maybe hasn't been possible before. So we did this with five different leadership teams uh, throughout last year. About 40 people were trained and collectively these 40 people identified over 80 unique AI use case ideas, which was mind blowing and it was fantastic. But that wasn't really the point. That was just practice and that was them learning to find these ideas, then challenge the ideas and elaborate on the value they create and the feasibility of these ideas. What we also got out of these conversations with DNA, the more exciting part to me at least was that since this organization already has a fairly high level of AI maturity, they were able to uh, come away from the bottom level of the puzzle. They were able to start talking about the ways of working. Does our organization support the cross-scientific, um, cross-organizational collaboration that we definitely need to enhance? Do we have ways of working for that? Uh, do we need a governance model? Um, how do we need to improve our ability of finding the problems that are worth solving? So all these discussions were immensely valuable. And now that DNAs, all leadership teams, uh, all of the executives have the same understanding of where the organization is and how it could develop, um, their mutual collaboration is much smoother going forward and now they can take the organization to the next level. Um, if you find this interesting, if you'd like to know more about this um, or other customer cases that Solida has done, as promised, here is the link to you to the curated content hub. So specifically built for this event. Um, behind that link, you'll find more information about that DNA case, but also about other relevant customer cases. 
you'll also find the recording of this presentation. You'll get the slides in there in PDF format. Um, and then you'll find some contact details there if you'd like to get in touch with us. That was all from me for now. Um, and next, I'll be available for your questions live. So ask me anything. I'm really happy to answer uh, any of your questions that we have time for. If you don't want to ask your question here, you can always get in touch with me separately. I'm more than happy to discuss these topics offline too. So thank you very much for listening and I'll see you shortly. <laughs>